the fellow passenger here. In this video, I'm going to share a little glitch in Ableton that I found. Part of it, I would even cons maybe argue that it's a bug, but you can use that to your benefit if you want to, especially if you're into experimenting, making glitchy sounds. And there are a few things I discovered. So uh, to prepare, I have got a track with an 808 um, core kit. You know, I've just got a Tom playing. Tom sound. It doesn't matter which sound you use. This is just to illustrate the experiment. The other thing that I've done on the master channel, I've added a limiter and that is just to protect your ears and my ears and speakers, etc. because this experiment can get very loud. So I recommend that you do this because it can get out of hand pretty quickly. So I want to illustrate something. Return tracks. Uh, by default, you usually have a delay and a reverb that just comes with Ableton. I've just removed them for now and created a blank return track. There's no effect in here. So if I play my Tom sound and turn that up, it sort of sends it over to here. And you can see that coming in there, but it's not really affecting the sound. Something that is turned off by default in Ableton is you are not allowed to send it back into itself. I think that is literally just to protect your speakers and your ears so you don't by accident start creating this infinite feedback loop that is just going to get louder and louder and louder. But if you right click that, you can enable them. So now I've still that, got that turned up to max. No difference really. Well, I think it's maybe marginally louder, but if I turn that up, when you get sort of near or almost to the end, that's just going to overload and you get a distortion. So that's not particularly interesting. But now to the first trick that I've discovered, and I discovered this because I spoke to Ned Rush the other week and he was talking about using this send functionality of creating feedback loops and especially in reference to reverbs and put that in with a limiter and you create this, you, you, you get lots of interesting harmonics coming out and, and it sounds like some form of resonator or something. You can do really interesting things. So I was experimenting with that and by accident, I had the limiter in there because that's crucial when you do this. So you don't, so the volume doesn't sort of build up and it gets very loud. So I had the limiter, but I actually had no other effect in there. And it sounded like this. Well, I'm going to do it without first. That's without the limiter. If I add the limiter now and I turn this up again. Do you hear that? So it adds almost like a car plus strong, super tight delay. If you turn that all the way up, you just get one long tone because it's basically sending the volume back into itself. That's not what we want. But I also realized like, that's probably why, the, the reason why this is happening, I think, is because adding any effect will eat a little bit of your CPU. And the more of these limiters you add, let's do this little experiment. This is pointless, but it's just to prove the point, really. So if we say we have our carplus, you can hear that little carplus strong effect there. The more of these limiters we add, the longer the delay time is going to be. So if I add it, just... you heard the sound difference there. And if I take all of them and just copy them, even longer delay. Now I've got, I've got loads of them now. I just copied and pasted. So they look... The important thing here is either if you turn that up to max, the send return, or you can do that. You just get an infinite effect and pull that down again. The other thing you can do, you can turn that up to max and you can turn these ones down a little bit. Basically just, you must avoid creating either sort of zero dB or more because then you will feed back in more volume and you will just get that infinite tone. So the more limiters you have, the longer the delay time, and the more you turn up the gain, that's basically almost like your feedback.
pointless exercise. You can balance this or the ceiling or the send those ones as long as you don't go over um, zero dB. Okay, so that was the first little experiment. Pretty pointless, but just an interesting little fact. Okay, let's get back to this. So I turn that back down again. Let's go back just to our one limiter. This is the glitchy thing that I found interesting. So we got that back, turn this up. So now I haven't turned it up quite to max, or oh, I can turn it up to max and just turn the gain down a little bit here. So I wanted to modulate something and I think I was meant to put it on an LFO on a different channel. You know, you get with Ableton, you get this section here with modulators, like an LFO that's basically like, um, I'm not going to explain what an LFO is, so you can find that elsewhere. Um, you wouldn't thought that these, this should not affect the sound unless you modulate something with it. But that in itself, even though it's an audio effect, it's not there to change the audio, it's there to control parameters. So without it, it sounds like this. We have our little cobbler strong. But if I add in the LFO, just listen to what happens. So that's without. Did you hear that? What What is happening there? That I wonder if that's a little bug because that's not the, that's not the CPU as in like, yes, it could be, but what is it doing to it? And if I create more of those, it doesn't, it doesn't sound any different. It does something to the sound. So can we then use that to our advantage? I realized then you can see if I can do this. You can create, this is going to be hard. Uh, you can create an interesting balance between the gain, the sand and the ceiling. I haven't worked out what the science to this is yet. So this is just going to be playing it by ear. Let me see. So if I do turn that on. You can create these sort of resonant effects. The thing is like a little tip, if you don't know this, you can't see it because I'm not on camera, but if you hold down shift while you're moving any parameters, you fine tune it. So you can do really small increments. Okay, so you can hear you, we're starting to make some, some sort of effects, but now it's start, okay. This is almost like you're building your effect in your own right. Some sort of weird delay that feels like some frequencies are cut back. So it sounds like it's, that the, the higher frequencies are being tapered off somehow. Not sure what's going on. So I thought if we just randomize the gain using the LFO, we probably need to either change the depth or the offset so we don't get too much positive gain. We can oh, come on, give me. probably want another limiter after so we don't go too crazy overboard here I don't let me see where do we have the limited and then we just take the ceiling down a bit we should still get those crazy effects and let's create a little beat and we see here rather than just having that tom
you hear that? It all of a sudden starts sounding really cool and glitchy. Like I, there's no effect that does this by default. So you're almost. And then I'm going to start digressing. Just imagine then doing, we add another return track, which is then implementing a little bit of that of using, I'm just going to use a standard reverb now, set dry wet to full. And then we can add another LFO here. So if we do that, uh, we're all at that and they are in modulators LFO. And then we also enabled it the effect that we have set up, so we can send that to our other reverb channel that we've now set up. So if we map that to that, and then we set that to random as well. But then we don't stop there. We actually do the same here. We enable that so we feed back a bit into itself set that to maybe feedback into both this channel again and into itself. somewhere where yes fine. there's probably something stuck in that feedback loop still all right i'm just going to turn on the the volume that was it this was just a little short video um just wanted to share that little glitch that i found you hope you enjoyed it um if you like my videos please consider sponsoring me on a on patreon it means loads i really want to share more and do more and the more support i get that will hopefully enable me to just spend a bit more time doing this. And also I have a big goal just for me psychologically, if anything, I'm getting there, but maybe I could get to a thousand subscribers. So if you don't mind and hopefully enjoy my content, please, please do that. Um, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you for the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>